Awesome. So is there also a meal plan or diet incorporated into this? Yeah. Food, nutrition, diet, it's 80% of the battle. Right. It really is. Uh, you know, we've gone through it, my wife and I. We've learned, you know, you can work out all you want, and I've done it. And I mean, I've ridden my bike for up to 18 hours at a time. Right. Um, you know what? But if you're still eating horribly, it's not going to make a big difference. It's gonna, or it's going to make it, you know, slow down your progress completely. Yeah. And so we do have a really... Not not too not super simple, but it's simple enough that it gets you understanding of what our what our principles to a healthy nutrition plan is. Okay. And from there, you can you can catapult to other stuff, and we're looking to also enhance that here in the future. So it's not exactly here. Eat this, eat this, eat this. It's more of just presenting principles. Yeah. So you can kind of figure things out on your own. Yeah, I mean, there are so many great resources out there for nutrition. Right. I, I will say I'm not an expert other than I've tried a lot of stuff, right? <laughs> good and bad. One of the best thing I can tell anybody who's listening is if you want to know what you're eating, you got to write it down. And, and a lot of places will say, hey, write it down for a couple of days. I, I say write it down for a week. Right. Write down what you are eating every day because I've heard it time and time again. People will come back, and even in our test group, after four weeks, they're coming back to us going, I'm not really seeing change. <laughs> okay, what are you eating? And then, well, I had this, and I'm eating this. I go, okay, write it down, everything. Right. Cheat yourself. If you grab a handful of, I don't know, Doritos right. on the vending machine, you got to write it down. Because the only person you're hurting is yourself. Right. So I tell people, write it all down from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. Yeah. And at least you have a really good, solid base where you can start looking at it and going, wow, that's why, even though I did this workout today, I still took in right. XYZ. I, I, I did it that recently, and actually, because I was holding kind of, a, I'm holding a challenge, and I did that the, well, I've been kind of doing it, the, but I really did it the first week of the year. And I learned not only what I was eating, but when I was eating uh -huh. I learned that I I could do pretty good during the day. Like I can have I could start out have a great breakfast and maybe even just bring a salad and some fruit for lunch. And then when I got home, my wife would have a nice meal there for me. But sometimes if it wasn't quite ready, I might grab a handful of cereal or pretzels or whatever it might be and grab yep. a handful here or a great handful there. And then I'd have dinner. And then from 7 p.m. to whenever I went to bed, it was just munch here, munch there, munch here. So you learn where your weaknesses are that you may not be aware that you're actually doing because it's mindless eating. Yeah, and, and, and dude, I have that same issue with myself. Sometimes I still come home and, man, I walk in, and that's my, that's my part where I'm really um, lack control at times is, yeah, I come home and the food smells good. and Right. Said that the chips and salsa are, are readily available, so I'll go jump and get those. And one thing I've done for myself, and I work in the home and out of the home at times, okay. but I, I make it sort of a point to right before I'm about to get home is eat a nice healthy snack. Right. So try to get that nice piece of fruit in with maybe a couple handfuls of almonds. You know, you got your protein in there, got your fruit in there, and then this way when I walk through the door, I don't have this hunger feeling in my gut. Right. And all of a sudden, as soon as I walk through the door, it smells good and it just triggers. Right. And I just forget <laughs> that I need to control myself. So, yeah, that a is a, that is a tough, tough time. But obviously, you've learned a lot. So now you can start looking back at it and going. And do something about it. Right. Set some that, goals. And, and sugars. Sugars are the next thing in, in when you're eating and you're looking at your plan, what, what are you eating? I mean, what's it what's it made of? Right. Fortunately, too much of it is processed sugars, and that's just a detriment to your to your body and even into your workout. Because a lot of people I hear they just go, "Man, I'm eating, but I still feel lethargic." Probably is the case that they're getting in too much processed foods, too much sugars, and their body's just not able to sustain the level of activity they're doing now. So it's not only about how much you eat, about what you eat that you're eating things it's that are quality quality. Oh, quality 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 man it's it's go through your pantry and dump out anything that has fructose 
high dose syrup. It's, it's just, it's not good. Right. You know. For couples, what would you say the biggest challenge is to being, you know, fit as a couple? Being on the same page. Being on the same page. If it's, it's one couple has a goal, the other one doesn't. Yeah. And so it's being able to hopefully find a way where you guys can sit down and talk. I think this is a big thing that couples expect their spouse to have the ESP and just read their mind. Right. And what really needs to happen is to there needs to be a really big powwow, sit down, talk. Right. Sometimes the husband or the wife just needs to stand up and just go, okay, we need to talk because this is where I want to go with my fitness and I notice that you're not there. Let's talk about this. Right. And let's try to get on the same page. And even if you don't want to work out right now, I just need your support. And for many years, that's what I did. I mean, I just, I rode my bike. I did my exercise. Elisa had no desire. Right. You know, she's had the kids and and, you know, she just didn't have the desire. I would still talk to her. I would still support her um, in whatever she was doing. You know, she would go in and out. But I think the big thing is that couples just need to find something that they can do together that they enjoy as well. Okay. So once you have that talk, maybe it's something like, hey, maybe we don't need to do a marathon, but maybe we can just do a 5K or a 10K together. Right. And find some recreational intimacy activity that, brings you together. It might just be walking around the block 10 right. times. But that way you just start sort of getting into this area where you're where you're starting to work out together. Right. I think one thing that I've noticed and I we're off and on in our how in sync we are with our fitness, but when I first got married, I was actually pretty big into running. Okay. And I kind of thought, "Hey, you know, I'll be able to encourage her. We'll run together." And she was kind of actually pretty intimidated because I ran quite a bit. And so she's like, no, you don't have to run with me. You don't have to slow down for me. And I'm like, no, no, this is fun. This is, I'll go whatever pace you want to as long as we're going, you know, and that's fine with me. I, I, if I really wanted to go faster, I can find another time and go faster on my own. And so that, and it just didn't work out quite, as, quite right. So it's something that's hard. You can't force your spouse to do. You can't force them to have the same goals and, and aspirations as you. So I like what you say about as long as they can support you and what you want to do. Yeah. And I think um, what what kind of uh, what kind of recommendations can you do about what to say or what not to say even when you're when you're talking? Because I can think of opportunities where you can get critical of, hey, I wish you wouldn't make this food for me, or how, I mean, it's really touchy areas there, so what kind of advice do you have? For myself, what I've always done is, I just do, I've just done my workouts, and right. I've always just supported Elisa as much as I can. The hard part is, like you said, you do get critical at times, and so I've had to temper that a little bit by just mm -hmm. going, hey, I'm doing this for this reason. Can we start changing our diet right. to better reflect what I need? Right. And, you know, sometimes it's it's an easy go and sometimes it's not. Again, everybody's different. A lot of times, you know, for Elisa and I, because what you bring up with the running is so us. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's I, I love my cycling. Elisa right. has no desire to come riding with me. Right. And in all honesty, I have no desire to, for her to come riding with me either. It's right. just that's my activity. She has her stuff. Um, but one area where we're able to really just talk a lot of stuff through is walking. Right. Because there is no intimidation. And, and Elisa is the same way. She's like, I don't want to get on a bike. I'm going to be – I'm, I'm so intimidated by that. Right. You know, you do 200-mile bike rides in a day. Why would I want to go out there and even ride five miles with you? Um, but when we're walking – there is no competing going on. Right. It's we're walking, we're, we're talking. Um, if we're feeling good, we'll both pick up the pace. If not, we'll slow down. Right. It's just very, it's a good time for us to talk. I can imagine, you know, still having your own fitness plan, but if as long as you take a few nights a week to just, instead of watch a TV show together, to get out and go walk together, how yeah. much that will improve your own fitness but then also improve your, your marriage. So it sounds like a, I think something that people need to really address 
uh, and I'm glad that you guys made a website for this and, and are addressing this issue because I think there's so many couples that I don't think it's I don't think maybe it's the biggest issue in, in marriages because there's other you know financial and and you know infidelity and whatever. But I think if mar- you know couples can solidify this part of their relationship, it can only help. Right. And one one workout that Elise and I love to do together are hit intervals. So high intensity interval training. Okay. And we'll do anything from. Gosh, this morning we did nine intervals, 60 seconds of high intensity, 30 seconds of low intensity. Yeah. But the greatest thing is she's doing all her own exercises and I'm doing mine. Oh, wow. So we're, we're, we're working out together, but it's not like I'm doing push-ups and she's doing push-ups and we're trying to compete against each other. Right. I'm doing push She's over there doing jack. Okay. So it, it's been a really fun way for us to connect working out together and still getting in a great workout and feeling feeling great. Both of us feel like, hey, we got a great workout and we're encouraging each other. I tend to be more the encourager. She's right. just really intense and focused. Sure, sure. <laughs> but that that's another way to do it. And I just I just tell people all the time, just talk. And if 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 it's one of those areas where your heart's beating really fast, yeah. And for me, my palms start getting a little sweaty. It, it, it's a good sign. It means the conversation needs to happen. Right. And then to, just to not be too judgmental in those moments, but just to be open. And I think in those moments to, to listen as well to what the other person has to say because they may have some real issues with their you know, physical fitness or their, their body image or whatever it may yeah. be. All right. And now well, if you're on the other extreme, I was going to say, if you're just on the other extreme too where you're working out too much, right. also listen to your spouse too. Exactly. That be be ready for maybe that moment to where you might need to cut back and and uh, kind of meet in the middle somewhere. Hopefully, right. That's all what right. it's all about. And we're gonna you're gonna go through stages of life and seasons of your marriage where there's highs and lows. But you just try to keep it even keel as much as you can. Right. And as long as you're trying and you don't give up and say, "Hey, my spouse doesn't want to work out. It's not going to work out." Like you know, it's just yeah. not worth. It's not. If you're not going to be on the same page in that, there's a, it's you're, it's not critical, but it only can help to be on the same page, yeah. uh, fitness wise. It sounds like to me. So yeah. really appreciate your your uh, the opportunity for you to come on the and on the show and interview. Oh, thank you. And I've uh, the short time that I've seen your blog, I've loved it, and uh, wish you all the luck. Any last words of advice? No, just go out there and have fun. I mean, that's what it's about. Just go out there and have fun. I mean, it's your life. Feel good about it. Be confident with what you're doing. Set a goal and, and just put a smile on your face. When right. You're doing it. That's what it's about. It's about I, have, I have to tell you, after after talking, I'm, I'm going to go suggest to my wife that we go for a walk tonight with the kids and push them around on the stroller. Awesome. So, uh, appreciate it. Thanks, Micah. Have, have a, a good great one, day. Tony.